Hello, how are you? Ah, Jack, welcome back. I'm as lively as a spirited memory can be. Encased in my glass world, I flourish on the curious energy of visitors. That's the skeleton of a dodo bird speaking to the assistant director of the Cambridge Museum of Zoology. Now, for those who may not be aware, hope you're sitting down. I'm sorry to break it to you that the dodo bird has been extinct since the late 1600s. The decline of my kind, the dodos, is a tale tinged with both simplicity and tragedy. Life on Mauritius was idyllic until the late 1500s, when humans arrived with settlers and sailors. Now, as you can probably tell by its gaunt appearance, this dead as a dodo lacks the requisite body parts to carry out a vocalization. But thanks to artificial intelligence, this museum is using software to allow visitors to have interactive conversations with creatures like this. Museums generally choose what to tell people, um, but in this way, they can ask whatever they like. Um, and that's really, really valuable, I think. Like, they can have an actual conversation with a an animal with a specimen, and that, I think, brings it to life in a really different way than a normal museum exhibit might. And here at this museum in the UK, it's not just this Dodo GPT that's ready to process your prompt. They've got around a dozen of these AI installations, each outfitted with its own unique voice, allowing you to strike up a conversation with some butterflies, some cockroaches, or even this giant ancient sloth. I am Megatherium, the giant ground sloth a remarkable being that once inhabited the ancient landscapes of South America. And this whole experience is a bit more open-ended than simply having a dead bird parrot back some facts. When our assistant museum director here asked this platypus what it's like to be a platypus, this was the response. It's like dancing to nature's most eclectic symphony. Imagine this, your senses are heightened in the water. With my bill, I'm attuned to the electric whispers of the river, detecting creatures hidden beneath the surface. Each dive feels like exploration with invisible guidance, swimming through freshwater streams, feeling the gentle resistance of water was pure joy. Yeah, a little bit more lively than an inscription on a plaque or recording on a loop. People can ask whatever they like. And when I started working with the Nature Perspectives platform, I was just asking factual questions. But because the animal's personality comes across, really quickly you end up having an actual conversation where you're asking more about feelings, or you're asking anything fun, you could ask it you know, how its day was, what it had for breakfast, you can have a, a proper conversation. And I think that is, it's a different way of engaging and it, it's, yeah, it's, it's much more real, I think, than most information we get in museums. The software this museum is using is provided by an education tech company called Nature Perspectives, whose co-founder told the Associated Press that they really tried to imbue these creatures with a little bit of personality. So this simulations are very flexible. We, we build what we call uh, a digital mind on a simulation of a specific individual. That includes uh, personality traits, uh, as much as we can of the known science about its uh, evolutionary adaptations and so on, and alongside uh, a memory bank of things that it possibly have experienced during its lifetime. So that kind of a, a base layer gives the visitors or users uh, the ability to ask whatever it is that they're interested in knowing. So they can ask about any topic and they will get an answer that is uh, grounded in this digital mind, in this digital entity. Chatbots, of course, are one of the most high profile implementations of AI technology. With one recent Washington Post analysis of a giant chatbot data set, finding that when it comes to people interacting with conversational software, much of it is done with the purpose of creative writing and role play, help with homework and search, with the occasional, you know, dirty talk. Fortunately, this museum here has put up guardrails to filter out profanity and inappropriate appropriate questions, preventing whatever perverted proposition you were planning for that platypus. But hey, they'll answer pretty much anything else until this exhibit ends in November. Like whether our dodo here thinks it's due for the Jurassic Park treatment. Reviving the dodo is a thought-provoking notion. On one hand, it offers a glimmer of hope, an opportunity for redemption, and a chance to right past wrongs. However, the task is fraught with complexities. The world we knew with its specific ecosystem is no longer the same. A clone dodo would find itself in an unfamiliar environment. The best part might not be in resurrecting the past, but in protecting the rich diversity that thrives today. Speaking of protecting a rich diversity that thrives today, subscribe to At The News Refresh for more weird and interesting news stories like these. Like this recent piece about how scientists just mapped the brain of a fruit fly. Wow.